Marcus Conti reporting on one of the biggest stories of our time, censorship on the internet. Monopolies that control our free speech, control uh, what we used to have, the First Amendment. Now it's the, the uh, first corporate amendment. <laughs> the amendment where corporations tell you what you can say, when you can say it, how much of it you can say. Can you be paid to say it? Are you, you know, where can you say it? You know, and, and is it fair? Is it equitable? Is it, is it uh, uh, allowed? <laughs> All this shit, right? So, um, filtering out speech. So Google was busted hard by um, Project Veritas. Uh, Project Veritas is a media organization, projectveritas.com, put out a 25-minute manifesto on Google and how they uh, manipulate the algorithms to filter out uh, uh, questionable or uh, objectable to them type of content of a political nature. Right? And uh, one of the whistleblowers there, uh, I mean, it's just an amazing video. Now, let's talk about that video for just one second because the video is actually deleted off of YouTube. <laughs> you talk about, right, so... so so a media organization exposes a giant corporation uh, for censorship and violations of the First Amendment. They're not saying First Amendment violation. I am saying it's a violation of the First Amendment because this is the public square. Right? YouTube and, and uh, it, this is the equivalent of the public square in the past where people would go outside and uh, talk to each other and you know sh share ideas, right? It's a, it's a social sh social club, social gatherings, right? This is the social gathering of our time, right? Un in uh, indisputable. Uh, but so Google, uh, this is just a report from Zero Hedge. I was reading it yesterday. And uh, I also watched Lift the Veil. I was watching Nathan, you know, kick, kick it uh, as well last night. And then uh, so, I, so it inspired me to go watch the 25-minute video. And I did. Veritas, uh, Project Veritas, right? But now when you go there, <laughs> on the same article, right? They deleted it. That YouTube deleted uh, Project Veritas's video exposing them. Right? Your video is no longer available due to a privacy claim by a third party. <laughs> ah, powerful. I, I've been saying it all along. Monopolies. Right? That's why you have to break these companies up. So we'll watch a little bit of the video. I hope it doesn't, you know, cause problems, but whatever. It's the video is available. If you if it if it gets knocked off here, you can go to projectveritas.com, uh, and they they back the video up. It's not just a YouTube video. But, uh, I'll play a better version of it, right? So, so so let's let's do that now. Let's watch the the first two or three minutes is devastating, right? Just try to listen the the, the woman's accent. And audio is a little uh, rough, but the, you can read uh, the captions. Um, the reason why I decided to come to Project Veritas is because um, people need to know what's actually going on with Google. There's this facade about what they're doing, but what they're actually doing, what the employees are actually seeing inside the company is different. But the reason we launched our AI principles is because people were not putting that line in the sun, but they were not saying what is fair and what's equitable. So we were like, well, we are a big company, we're going to say it. She's determining what is fair and equitable. Right, let, let's just try to break it down. You can watch it on your own, but I want to see. Um, they are not saying what what fair and what's equitable. So we're like, well, we're a big company. We're going to say what's fair and equitable. Just, it's very important what she's saying. So she's the head of responsible innovation, right? It's, it's, this is all this um, justice warrior shit. Right? Justice warriors, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna filter out what's, what's justice, what's just, and what isn't just in speech. Fair and what's equitable. So we're like, well, we are a big company. We're gonna say it. People voted for the current president do not agree with our. Right there, people who voted. For the current president, who do not agree with our definite, do not agree with our definition of fairness, right? So one one political party or one political thinkers set of thinkers doesn't agree with your definition of fairness. Why? Because it's not fair. It's biased. They're not objective piece 
They're not an objective source of information. But then there are teams uh, which are called ML Fairness. ML Fairness, the teams? Fairness, like, yeah. you know, you need to be fair. We're also training our algorithms, like if 2016 happened again, would we have... We also, we're also training our algorithms in 2016. Uh, if, if 2016 happened again, we'd, uh, we would have, we would come to be different. What would, would the outcome come to be different? <laughs> would the outcome come to be different? They are a highly biased political machine. They're basically saying that, that if 2016 happens again, they're ready for it. Watch. Um, that is bent on never letting somebody like Donald Trump come to power again. 2020 is certainly on top of now my old organization, Trust and Safety, is top of mind. They've been working on it since 2016 to make sure we're ready for 2020. Right there. Right there, right? You're hearing you're hearing from the from the one in, right inside of the house, right? 2020, uh, certainty on top of my old organization, Trust and Safety, top of mind. They've been working on it since 2016 to make sure we're ready for 2020. They're ready to manipulate the, the vote, right? Since 2016 to make sure we're ready for 2020. This is a Goliath I'm but of David trying to say that the emperor has no clothes. He got called in front of Congress multiple times. They can pressure us, but not change. So Congress can pressure a large organization, but we're not going to change. Congress can pressure Google, but we're not going to change. Being a small little ant, I can be crushed, and I'm aware of that. But this is something that is bigger than me. This is something that needs to be said to the American public. This is really good. Elizabeth Warren is saying we should break up Google. And like, I love her, but she's very misguided. Like, that will not make it better. It will make it... Saying that we should break up Google. And like, I love her, but she's very misguided. Like, that will not make it better. It'll make it worse because now all these... It would make it worse because now all smaller companies who don't have the same resources that we do will be charged with preventing the next Trump situation. It's like a small company cannot do that. Whoa. Do you see the, the, the mindset here? That Google is admitting, at least this girl that works there is admitting that a small company can't can't get a can't control uh, the 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 U.S. mindset, the mindset of people, the voters, can manufacturing the consent for the next election. And she's saying, well, only a large company can do that. So that's justification to keep the company large. Oh, no, that is the definition of monopoly, right? That's what I've been saying all along. That's the 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 premise of I guess this channel is that that the corporations are too big. I, and then they, they have all the power, and then you got some little girl, Justice Warrior, uh, running the place, right? She's chosen because of her radical opinion. She's chosen to be in this position, right? And uh, so, so there you go. I mean, there is the evidence in Google's own words that if you break companies, if you break companies that are too big, like Google, up, you then have smaller companies that don't have the ability to manipulate the the consciousness like Google does. Will be charged with preventing the next Trump situation. It's like a small company, and it's like devastating. Watch a little more. Earlier this year, a Facebook insider exposed deboosting of conservatives on Facebook. That insider inspired someone at Pinterest to come to Project Veritas with his story. This guy got fired from Pinterest, by the way. And, um, but now they're going to make a case, right? Because I think Ver Veritas leans towards Trump and conservative values, whatever those are. Uh, and so they're going to make the, the case that the conservatives, I don't know what that means anymore. I think conservative is a stupid term. Conserve what? You're not conserving shit. You want to keep things the same in a failing system? Whatever whatever it means. It's stupid. What does progressive mean? You're progressing towards what? Right? You got to be, you, you know, it's like common sense, right? Uh, how about, how about uh, the, the, the party of common sense? 
But anyway, this, this guy is, um, they, they're going to, Ver, Project Veritas is going to make the claim that, that um, Google is leaning left and, and shutting out right opinion. Right? But why am I? What, what, I'm not right. I'm not a right opinion. Do I think Hillary Clinton is a, is a thief and a scam artist and should be imprisoned? Absolutely. Does that make me a right, uh, someone on the right? No, that makes me correct, <laughs> right in the sense of being right. But it doesn't make me a right winger. See how, see how someone, someone who is, I, I mean, I'm left on almost, I guess, whatever that means, left on almost every issue, maybe not on gun control or, or immigration and stuff like that. There's some, some things that I, I, I would favor, you know, what, what the people on the right say, but not all of it. So, I mean, well, what am I? I'm mostly, but, but the point is that I get, someone like myself gets clumped into the category of right. So let's look at the, let's, let's move on from that. So if you want to watch the whole video now is, is, um, is Google, Right, it's it's. I thought it was about foreign influence, right? Foreign influence, right? That they should be that our elections are being influenced by foreign entities. Well, who is the twenty? Who holds twenty five percent of Google shares? Google's share is a Google is a huge multinational national billion billions and billions of shares, right? Who owns it? Oh shit! Holy shit! There's a Russian. Oh my god! This guy, Sergey Brin, Sergey. Fucking Russian guy. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh my God. Sergey Brin is an American computer scientist and internet entrepreneur. Together with Larry Page, he co founded Google. How many shares does, does he own? Right. So he owns he owns about 20, I saw it somewhere else, 26% of Google. Eric Schmidt owns about 26%. And this is the all the holdings, right? Vanguard, BlackRock, State Street, Price. I'll make the point in a second what I'm trying to say. All of these organizations, Capital World Investor, right? Top mutual funds, all these mutual funds, how many holders there are there? There's 2,945 institutions that hold shares. Multinational institutions that hold shares in Google that directly influence Google. Now, to, to, how do you directly influence Google? By, by buying their shares and supporting their their ideology, basically, right? So what am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is that, that Google is influencing our elections, right? Google is, is filtering our speech legally or illegally, right? Is it a violation of the First Amendment? Absolutely. Has it ever been tried in the Supreme Court? Not yet, but it should be, right? And you know what they what they're doing is they're they're filtering out our speech right and not only that they're why not connect the dots right i don't like guilt by association i think that the whole russia gate thing is a total scam and a total fantasy that 12 russians hacked the democratic national Com- committee and and took their emails there's no evidence of that there's no proof of that there's no there's no valid evidence that that ever happened right Nonetheless, Russiagate is is a thing now. Russiagate is is part of American history that the Russians hacked. Twelve Russians swooped in and hacked the Democratic election. But it's just factually incorrect. It's more likely that it is a leak. The publisher is sitting in jail in England. He knows the answer. Likely a a, a uh, inside leak, inside drop. But nonetheless, if you're looking there for foreign influence, why not suggest that Google? is influenced by Russia, right? The owner is 25% holdings in, in is controlling the mind of Google. He's a Russian. Right? Lock him up, right? How stupid, right? Is it stupid? Is it stupid to think that we're, we're, that the United States is influenced by multinational corporations? Absolutely not. It is the fact. But then to say that Russia had an influence on the election is so ridiculous when you look at the 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 actuality of what's happening all right so i'll just just leave that out there so so back to the you know back to the main story watch the video i'll put the link down below veritas uh project veritas and uh give it a it's a 25 minute watch you saw the best three minutes of it where you know hidden cameras and and uh and uh dark vader type uh 
um, uh, whistleblowers come forward. Is it is it believable? Is it real? Uh, I think it is. I think it's I think it's pretty uh, you know pretty evidence based. Right? The woman seems to be um, who sh- who they say she is. The 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 girl yakking in the coffee shop, telling you all the dirty little secrets of Google, and uh, certainly the Pinterest uh, guy, Dark Vader. We don't know who he is, but it's pretty. It's a pretty valid, pretty uh, uh, powerful video. And the fact that Google knocked it down off of YouTube is is evidence. Is evidence of of violations of the First Amendment. Why can't people listen to the to to it objectively? What is your what is your bitch about it now? What are you gonna make up? They're gonna make up some kind of story. What is the story? Well, it says the video is no longer available due to privacy claim by a third party. What fucking privacy claim? What are you talking about? Privacy. What Google's privacy? That's called a leak. This is called journalism. This is journalism. Right? This is what journalists do. I'm more opinion, but that's journalism. That's guys that go in, they get the, the evidence, they get the information. Someone is speaking openly in a, in a coffee shop, and because Google doesn't like what they said, now it's a violation of privacy. Fuck you, man. So trouble times, you know, trouble times. You got to keep talking about this shit. You got to keep exposing it. Great job. Great job, um, uh Project Veritas. Let's see if they, you know, they get their their video back up. Uh, not that it really matters, but that was a slick move. You know, they got it. They got it on the on the other side over there. So, uh, Mark Scante re- reporting. Kindly become a uh, Patreon of this channel. All right, this is it. This is it's just us now, right? It's just us. Right? If if you know, I'm 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 on life support because someone like myself is all my videos are on YouTube. I back everything up, and someday it might appear. On you know on on a separate uh, site or other social media site, but I think the time of of these law lo- until these large uh, large um, companies are broken down right? until these large uh, social media organizations are broken down where they're manageable and they don't have this power this power uh, grab this ability to grab power. Um, you know, this is where we are right now. Hopefully, we'll you know we'll, we'll move off of this platform at some point. But, uh, anyway, Marcus Conte reporting. 